Okay, so today we're going to talk about finding and approximating square roots. So hopefully something's coming to mind when you hear this word square root. So the first thing I want to talk about is what we would call perfect squares. And what that is, is kind of what you think about it. It's a perfect square. It has a square has the same side, um, side length. And so a perfect square would be numbers that are squares of integers. So my side lengths are going to all be integers. So 2 squared would be 4. Okay? So 4 would be considered a perfect square. 3 squared, these are all like what you can technically do is just start with go through the integers. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and find out your perfect squares. So 3 squared, 3 to the second power is 9. 4 squared, 4 times 4, 16. 5 squared, it's 5 times 5, 25. So again, these are all perfect squares. 6 squared is 36. 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, and 10 squared is 100. So these perfect squares are going to come and help us out a lot when we're finding and approximating square roots. So you can always generate this list whenever you need to. So let's take a look at what it means to find the square root. So a square root is to undo squaring a number. You find a square root. So when I would take the look, here's an example. The square roots of 16 are 4 and negative 4. So what times what gives me 16? So 4 times 4 would give us 16, but also negative 4 times negative 4 would give us 16. So here are our roots. So again, negative 4 and 4 are considered our roots. So what would be the roots of 100? So what times what gives us 100? So the first thing we can think of is 10, because 10 times 10 gives us 100. And also negative 10, because negative 10 times negative 10 would give us 100 as well. What about the square roots of 64? Yep, it's going to be 8 because 8 times 8 is 64 and negative 8. So notice that there's both a positive and a negative when we're looking for the square roots of the number. So what times what gives us the 64? But for our purposes, we're going to be dealing mostly with the positive square root. So again, to, square, to undo squaring a number, you find the square root. So we use what we call this radical sign, okay? And to represent the positive square root. So if I was to take the square root of 25, that's gonna equal five. If I was to go back to one of those examples and take the square root of 100, that's gonna give me 10. Okay, notice I'm not getting that negative 10 because, again, we're dealing with this radical, radical sign that's going to give us the positive root. So let's take a look at a couple of other examples. The square root of 36, again, if you were to go back and look at your perfect squares, the list down, what times what gives you 36? Yep, that's going to be 6. Now, notice these are whole integers. This is a little negative out to the side. It's kind of hard to see that this is a negative. So the way that I would do this is I'm going to take the square root of 49, which is 7, and then I'm going to apply that negative to it. Okay, it would kind of be just like if I had a negative 1 times 7, that's going to give me a negative 7. Little tricky, but remember you're in seventh grade, so you get those little negatives. 
Okay, and let's take a look at this one. So the square root of 4 25ths. So a couple of things you can do here. You can take 4, the square root of 4, over the square root of 25. Okay, and that's going to give me 2 over 5. So that's my final answer, 2 fifths. And then this last one, the square root, again, you can have a decimal in here. That's okay. Um, it wouldn't be considered one of these perfect squares up here. But I can use the perfect square to help me find what that is because mm, 81, that was 9 times 9, so 9 squared. But I have this decimal right here. So off to the side, if you want to use, um, do it old school just to double check, let's do 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. So 9 times 9 is 81. I have two numbers behind the decimal, 1, 2. I have 2 here. Yep. So it's going to be, my square root is going to be 9 tenths. Okay. So again, looking for those perfect squares helped us out a lot on these. What happens if it's not a perfect square? This, these are kind of the hard ones, though. You've got to kind of look to see where it falls close to. So if I was to look back at the list, I'm just going to go ahead and go back. Okay, I know I'm looking for the square root of 20. So it's going to fall somewhere in between here, 4 and 5. Okay, so the square root of 20. Again, I'm just approximating it. So if I was to look at the square root of 16, that's going to equal 4. And the square root of 25, that's going to equal 5. So 20 is kind of right smack in the middle between, because it's um, it would be four places away from 16 and it would be five places away from five so it's going to be around 4.4 ish something so you could just say approximately and i should have used my little squiggly lines okay so i'm going to say approximately 4.4 something like that right you could also just say um, the square root of 20 is between 4 and 5. Okay. And we can tell again too that 20 is closer to 16 than it would be to 25. So you know again it's going to be 4 point something. So let's take a look at this one. The square root of 95. All right, so we're going to go back to our perfect squares to help us out. So I know that t the square root of 100 is going to equal 10. Okay, so this has to be less than 10. And then the square root of 81 is going to be 9. So I know that the square root of 95 is between 10 and 9. Or you could say 9 and 10. And if you wanted to look, where do you think the square root of 95 would be closer? Do you think it would be closer to the 10 or closer to the 9? Yep, it would be closer to the 10 because it's only 5 away. Okay, and then it's a lot further away to get to the 81. Okay, so let's take a look at this. The square root of 41. So again, I'm going to go and look at my perfect squares. So if I was to do 6, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 49 is 7. 
Okay, these are my perfect squares helping me out. So I know that the square root of 41 is between 6 and 7. And you can look to see which one you think is closer. So 41 is 5 away from 36, and 41 is 8 away from 49. So I know it's going to be a little closer to the 6 side than it would be to the 7. So that's just approximating, um, and I think you'll 